Hey guys, this is North back again with another video. Today's video is going to be my top five from the Giorgio Armani Privé collection line. Now, I only have six of them in my entire collection, so I will give you my top five, and at the end, I'll tell you which one I left off and why I left it off. So, let's go ahead and get into it. So before we get started, four out of the five of these in the Armani Privé collection. This one comes from the Thousand and One Nights collection. So these are inspired by the story of Thousand and One Nights. It's inspired by the smells of the Middle East. So let's go ahead and get into it. Coming in at number five is a limited edition. This is Rose D'Etterby. And as you see, this is not the typical Rose D'Etterby that comes in the black box or black uh, container black bottle. This one has gold flakes in it. Also, the smell is different on this one. The regular rose, the other bee, is a rose oud combination, whereas this is a rose and saffron combination. This one is a beautiful fragrance. I'm glad, I'm glad I was able to get my hands on it. I believe that there are three limited edition ones. This is the only one that has like the gold flakes in it. The other two just have different bottle designs. They're like black and gold. And I believe at least one of them has the same note breakdown as this one, where it's more rose and saffron uh, combination. This one was released in 2013. The main notes on this are Damascus Rose, Saffron, Amber, Woody Notes, and Patchouli. Now this one, I put this one on number five and all of them are worth having in my collection. They're all worth getting your nose on if you can. Um, but this one smells similar to me to another discontinued fragrance which is called uh, Calligraphy Saffron by Air Hermes. So they smell very similar to me. So if I say I didn't have this one, if I had that calligraphy saffron, that would fill the void for this one. But this is a beautiful fragrance. If you did get a chance to get your nose on it, please do. Or any of the other limited edition ones. You can find on Fragrantica the different limited edition ones and see the note breakdown and how it's different from the normal rose, the Airbnb. And that will be the same smell as this one with the rose and the saffron. So number five, this one is actually called Rose the Etterby, Lahore du Desert. Coming in at number four is Oud Royal. Now this one was released all the way back in 2010. This is also from the Thousand and One Nights collection. This one has Oud, Saffron, Incense, and Rose. But when I smell this one, I get more of a, a Rose Oud combination. I tried Rose the Etterby, the original, some time ago. I don't remember how similar, if at all, it is to this, but this is a very smooth, sophisticated rosewood combination. If you are not into wood, meaning you're not into the skanky, barnyardy wood, then this one will be right up your alley. It's very smooth and it is just like a, a, an opulent scent. It's very good. This one is still in production, I believe, out of the five. Three of them are discontinued. So this one is not discontinued. This one is still in production. So coming in number at number four, Wood Royal from the Thousand One Nights collection. Coming in at number three is one that uh, at the beginning of my journey, when I was trying to collect, uh, get as get my nose and in, in my collection as many incense fragrances as I could, I knew I had to add this one in my collection. And this is Bose de Ensemble or Incense Wood. This one was released back in 2004. The notes on this one are Incense, Vetiver, and Cedar. This one is a very like dry, churchy, incense-based fragrance. It's pretty linear, um, but it, it does fill that particular one if you're into a churchy incense type of scent. This is an awesome one to have. I do have a backup bottle of this one, so I got a 100 milliliter of this, and I also have a 50 milliliter of this. So that's how much I enjoy this fragrance, but I do have it at number three. So number three, Bose de Ensemble, and this, I believe, is the only one that is not part of the Thousand and One Nights collection. Uh, down to the top two. So this one definitely, it, to me, it wasn't a difficult one. It definitely was kind of difficult when I was doing my top incense-based fragrances. Uh, list which I will post and pin uh, in the video but this one is uh, a 2021 release and this one is called Sable Nui. 
Again, this one was released this year in 2021. It is part of the 1001 Nights collection. This one has uh, frankincense, benzoin, cedar, patchouli, and vanilla. This one, for me, is the best incense fragrance that uh, I have put my nose on this year. It is uh, it's beautiful. I felt like this one, uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, that this one to me adds the best of Bose de Ensigns and Incense Satin and just upgrades it. You know, it updates it and refines it and I think that it's great. But if you're into dry, just dry churchy incense with no sweetness to it, then maybe you won't like this. But I'm starting to get more into, not necessarily gourmand, but just the churchy incense type of feel with a little bit of sweetness to it uh, is really up my alley. So I put this one at number two, and this one is Sable Nui or Night Sands, and that is number two. Coming in at number one on my list of my top five Armani Privé, this one is one that I, I could not find discounted, so I ended up having to pay retail for it, but when I tested it, I did have to, I absolutely had to have it in my collection. It's one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Um, hopefully when I start doing a list of top 10 niche for life or top four niche for life, or even uh, I want to do a video with my top balsamic and resinous scents. This will definitely be at the top of those lists. And this is Mer Imperial. All right, Mer Imperial, of course, is part of the 1001 Nights collection. This one was released in 2013. The uh, notes in this one are myrrh, benzoin, and vanilla. Now, to me, this one is like an, an idealized version of what myrrh should smell like. It doesn't smell exactly like uh, either, un, either unburnt or burnt uh, myrrh when you are burning it. Myrrh does have a sweetness to it, but this would be an ideal version of it. This is just an awesome fragrance. Mixing, I love benzoin, and uh, benzoin already has a vanilla quality to it. Myrrh already has a sweetness to it, and then they add vanilla to it. It's not overly sweet, but it is just a just an awesome resinous scent. This one is my number one on my list of Giorgio Armani Privé from uh, their collection. So definitely, if you can get your nose on this, pick it up. This one is discontinued. So I did see that this is, again, readily available. I got this from Bloomingdale's. I see that it's still available at places like Harvey Nichols. It probably is still available, but I know that it is not in production anymore. So this is my number one. That is my top five Armani Privé. So which one did I leave off of the list? The one I left off of the list is Incense Satin. The reason why I left Incense Satin off of the list is that um, this is an incense-based fragrance, which to me has some sweetness to it. This one only has incense amber and woods, but it has some sweetness to it. And so, as I mentioned before, uh, Sable Nui has a sweetness to it as well. So that kind of fills that void to it. Incense Satin uh, was one that didn't make the cut, but this is an awesome fragrance as well, but this is discontinued. So Incense Satin is discontinued, Mer Imperial is discontinued, and the Rose the Outer B uh, limited editions are discontinued. Um, the other three, they are still available. Um, I wanna send a shout out to my little brother, Joseph. I was trying to think of this term because he collects records. And he mentioned this term, which I know is a practice that's done in all of business, especially consumer, consumer based things, but it's particularly popular with record collecting and uh, sneaker collecting. And you can see it now uh, within the world of fragrance is that they, they manufacture scarcity. They release things, people love it, and then they discontinue it. Now there are various different reasons why fragrances get, get discontinued. Sometimes it's because it's not selling. But a lot of times that's not the case. You know, if it was a, a, a fragrance may be very popular, you know, maybe the sales aren't as what it, what it should be. But to me, I believe that they are manufacturing scarcity. They'll release something that is awesome. People love it. And then they will put it on the chopping block. And it's, it's, uh, you know, infinite examples of that. But one that was just discontinued that I heard was uh, Pure Havan. 
uh, by Mugler. Now I picked up, not all of them, but I have about six of those Muglares, and Pure Van was one that, you know, was still available, still available to even buy on the website, and that's apparently been discontinued, and that's like one of their most popular fragrances. So that's going to put people into a frenzy. People are going to start buying it and also build some mystique and, you know, around that particular fragrance for people to want to buy it and pick it up and get it now instead of holding off until later. So I just wanted to mention that because I believe a lot of times that's what's going on when they're putting axes on a lot of, uh, you know, people's favorite fragrances. Mer Imperial is, you know, one of the best best fragrances I've ever smelled and that's been discontinued. So I believe that that's what they're doing. Uh, these type of companies, they have their cash cows and so they can do that. You know, they can build this manufactured scarcity. It also brings more attention to their brand. And when something new gets released, it'll have people in a frenzy to go ahead and buy it so that when it gets continued, they will have it in their collection. Anyways, I'm done with my rant. I do thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed this list. Are there any from the Armani Privé line that I should check out? Because there's still so many of them. I haven't, I've only tried a couple of the fresh ones and um, the ones that are in the blue and the red bottles. Uh, I've tested those, but I haven't picked any of those up. I'm really into, as I said before, incense and I'm into resin. So those are the ones that I focused on when I was looking at picking up some of these Armani Privé. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know, have you tried any of these? Have you had a chance to try Sable Nui? Please let me know and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Peace.